on guys, Brandon here with Exotic Cars 19. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why you should buy an SVT Raptor. Simple as that. Um, in case you guys are unfamiliar with this truck or new to the channel, um, I bought this truck on the 5th of July and it's now coming into mid-February. So just over seven months now with this truck and honestly... No regrets. Mm -hmm. You have no regrets? Dad? No. If you guys haven't considered one, maybe this will at least you know, plant the seed in your head for the idea of getting a Raptor, or if you guys are already remotely considering getting a Gen 1 or an SVT or any Raptor for the most part, hopefully this will just kind of put it right off the edge and, uh, and you guys can just pull the trigger on one. So with that said, this will be a specific video on the SVT Raptor which is the Gen 1 Raptor. Uh, however, a lot of the pros that I'll just talk about here, uh, probably about half of them are kind of all Raptors in general. Uh, that's both Gen 1, Gen 2. Uh, the quick summary on it, uh, SVT Raptor is the uh, special vehicle team from Ford that has then kind of changed now. It's just the Ford Performance. Uh, Ford Performance are the ones that are doing, you know, Focus RS, GT350, GT500, GT350R, uh, 4GT, you know, the obviously the Ford Performance vehicles and the racing team and all that stuff. But before that, it was the SVT team. So when I say SVT Raptor, that is the Gen 1 Raptor, which was made, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it started in 2010 and went all the way until 2014, which is what this truck is. Uh, this is a 2014. And I'll just say this real quickly and I'll try to justify it. If you're gonna get a Gen 1 Raptor, I would try to get a 13 or a 14. Main reason on that is they really fine tune some stuff. The headlights and taillights got a little bit more, I don't know, uh, upgraded, uh, modern looking, just cleaner. Uh, but definitely because it's now standard with the 6.2 liter V8, which has gone away to the twin turbocharged 3.5 liter V6 in the new ones. In 2010, I believe that was the first year, uh, it actually had a 5.4 liter V8 that made 310 horsepower and honestly couldn't really get out of its own way. Um, just for a Raptor with the great suspension and everything a Raptor has, just wasn't right. So they had the 6.2 liter V8 as an option. Pretty soon they realized there's just no point to that uh, through 5.4, so the 6.2 became standard in 13 and 14. But the 6.2 is up in horsepower from the 5.4 that was a you know standard engine before. Went from 310 to 411. I believe the new Raptors are pushing about 450, 455 or so, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with the twin turbocharged V6. Again, I'm not going to compare it too much. I'll save that for the comparison and review video on that one. Um, but there is something to kind of lust at towards the V8. One, for kind of an enthusiast point of view, being the last of the V8, unless they bring it back, which a lot of people don't see happening, uh, and my apologies if there's an underpass, I gotta do it, guys. Here's one reason why the V8's great. This one's got a couple cheats. I got the Corsa Extreme Exhaust, which is no resonator, just straight through. Sounds fantastic. It's not too droney. It's actually not droney at all. Slow speeds, it sounds grumbly and nice, but not obnoxious. It's also got a K&N cold air intake, and that's it. Other than that, the truck's completely, completely stock. Just a couple things to make it uh, inhale and exhale just a little bit better. But I will say one thing, one reason uh, to get an SVT is the immature reason of the soundtrack. That engine, if you open it up the way I did with the exhaust, you just can't beat it. Sticking with the lines of the V8, I'm sorry guys, the underpass is back. <laughs> Sticking with the lines of the V8, it's a very reliable engine. And so back to the work truck thing. When I first got it, it sounded like a V8, uh, but it's not like a work truck. And the reason is it was the engine out of the F250 for fuel, not the diesel. Uh, engine. You had the option. You had diesel or you had the 6.2 liter. So because it was in fleets of work vehicles, we already kind of see the extent of the life of the 6.2 liter V8. What can it do? And a lot of company vehicles had a fleet of them, flatbeds, whatever, towing stuff around. And they would be very minimal upkeep all the way 300, 400, sometimes even half a million miles. So 300,000, 400,000 miles. And uh, I see on forums, a lot of people that have 300 and 4,000, 400,000 miles Sometimes the companies at that point will trade them in for new trucks or whatever, but they didn't have problems leading up until that, just very minimal upkeep and oil changes. So the engine itself is proven in a work truck manner, high mileage uh, driven all the time, towing stuff. So that makes me think that maybe this engine is understressed being in the F-150 because most Raptor owners 
you know, they aren't really made for towing heavy stuff. They're not really made for work trucks like that. However, you might go under different kinds of stress because they're Raptor and you're gonna be flooring it all the time. So, uh, but th with that said, uh, the SVT Raptor specifically, cause the 6.2, cause the sound and that, that reliability that's already been proven through the F-250. Forget the engine, and this can be true for both Raptors, but this one's been on the market for a little longer, so this is a little bit, you know, we get a better view at it, and that is value retention. My gosh, did the Raptors do pretty good on the market. Now, they're not investment cars, maybe, or investment trucks, maybe not yet anyway, but I'll talk about the SVT specifically here because, it, like I said, has been out the longest. This truck uh, started at about 48,000 and change, this one specifically, uh, window sticker was at $56,220. I bought it back in August after, was that, four years, four and a half years or so? Uh, and it had 57,000 miles. And I thought I walked out with a good deal just looking at the market. Uh, and I paid $44,000 for it. So it only lost, if I think correctly, it was at like 12 grand uh, or so. $12,000 loss and a $56,000 truck with almost 60,000 miles after four, four and a half years or so, that's not bad. We're talking about a truck here. If you compare that to a Lariat of that same year, 2014 Lariat or whatever, uh, percentage-wise, it depreciated far heavier. So that initial hit, losing that money, that you gotta understand a lot of that is just from the going from a new vehicle to a used vehicle. That happens to all of them, except like the weird ones like GT2 RSs or you know the collectible stuff uh, right off the bat. But for the most part, any car, when it goes off the lot, gets a mile on it, it's now used and it loses the value. With that said, I think the best value retention you're gonna see is buying a used one. And obviously you don't even have the option to get a Gen 1 new anyway, so it's not worth mentioning. But if you buy one, like I did, uh, I bought this in July, paid 44,000. I've since put 10,000 miles on it. And I think looking at the market, looking at you know 2014s and the terrain color specifically with uh, 67,000 and change on the odometer. I think I can get out of it for over $40,000. I think I could probably sell for honestly 41, 42, and I'd be out a couple grand in sales tax. But I just think, as far as the entry exit vehicle, this is a really good one. You could just get in a Raptor, drive it five, 10,000 miles for six months, a year, whatever. And if it's not right for you, you could sell it and you're just. You're just not depreciating like you would be if you bought a brand new truck for the same money. $44,000 can get you a brand new F-150. Uh, not a Raptor, but you know, an F-150 nonetheless. And you might think you're better off that way getting a new vehicle, but you gotta take in consideration um, what's gonna happen with the market. Take that for what you will, but you know what? Uh, study the market yourself. Kind of go on Auto Trader now. See what they're going for. Go on anywhere, you know, Raptors are listed. Just kind of take a look. Check it back in a year and kind of see for yourself. But they they just do well. I, I'll just leave it at that. Now, I guess one thing someone might be saying, if I'm making this video literally titled something along the lines of why you should buy an SVT Raptor, you might be thinking to yourself, what if I don't off-road? Well, you know, that's like buying a GT3 RS and, and not going to the track. You could do it you'll look really cool on the road, but um, maybe you're not using it to the full capabilities. That could be okay. Um, I will say this, let's let's talk about the off-road capability. I've only gone a few times, and when I say off-roading, I'm not doing crawling or anything like that, or at least I haven't yet. I haven't done anything too harsh on it. I actually, for off-roading for me, I like having it in rear-wheel drive, turning the traction control off and just trying to slide the tail out. Um, that's kind of my ideal off-roading for the Raptor. Uh, I don't know, that's just kind of my thing. I enjoy that quite a bit, but I do that quite harsh. Sometimes I've gone mudding a couple times unintentionally. It was just raining and had a stick in four wheel drive and gets splattered with mud. So I've done off-roading with this and I gotta say, you forget how great of a road car it is because it's so good and so capable. Back to the point, if you're not using it for off-roading, uh, you could still get a Raptor because of this right here. Obviously this won't do it justice, but if a vehicle like the Raptor was built for like really harsh conditions or and you know, Baja and all that stuff, it's gonna make it pretty tolerable on the road too. Uh, if you didn't see a speed bump and you just blasted right over it, it might bend the wheels in your BMW. It's gonna do nothing to the Raptor. So yeah, I mean, for you know, getting your groceries and all that mundane stuff, the Raptor, it, it became my daily driver. I still own the Shelby GT350. That was my daily driver or so I kind of claimed because I didn't have another vehicle. 
Now I have both, and honestly, that Shelby only comes out when I have the itch to drive a manual quickly, uh, because this will do everything. It's still exciting, but yeah, just all the mundane drives, just grocery getting, all that stuff. It's just easy. They're not oversized. They've just got plenty of space. Passenger, uh, driver, the seats are super comfortable. The back seats have plenty of room. Uh, up here, I believe it was an option. I don't know how much it was, but uh, heated seats, cooled seats, uh, even though it's a 14, which is still not that old, but you have the Bluetooth connectivity. The sound system on this one's got the Sony sound system. Sounds great. The new ones have an even better sound system. So uh, as far as just, I don't know, like if I were in the market for a Tahoe, I wouldn't be. I'd just get a Raptor. If I was in the market for some kind of Suburban or some kind of like big SUV, I'd just get a Raptor. Again, maybe that's just because I'm young and childish, but um, I don't know. Take that for what you will. They're great off-road, great on-road. Uh, value retention is fantastic, and this engine's going to be something to lust at for years to come. I guess that's the quick summary. I could have made it a little quicker, couldn't I? Let's go ahead and crack a window and do one more little acceleration here. Jesus, I almost feel bad for that one. That was loud. Almost. So I guess I'll end it on uh, on that note. Hopefully no one's after me. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.